You might have seen this stunning reel by at Omar Avasule on Instagram. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to recreate it from scratch inside DaVinci Resolve's Fusion. All right, first up, I've got Instagram page screenshot here in my Fusion composition. To turn this flat image into a spicy 3D scene, we need a few Fusion nodes. Image Plane 3D, Duplicate 3D, and Transform 3D. Think of these like the holy trinity of fake depth. Now hit 2 on your keyboard to preview the final output. Select the Duplicate 3D node. Go to the inspector and set it to around 100 copies. Then give it depth by slightly increasing the Z position. For me, that's about a point zero 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 four. You might need to adjust this depending on your project, but a tiny number is the secret. And look at that. We have thickness. To really sell this effect and make those edges pop, I'm going to add my secret sauce, an inner shadow. This helps define the edges and stops it from looking like a flat block. If you're wondering how I got that inner shadow so clean, it's a plugin I use all the time. You can grab it using the affiliate link in the description. All right, sales pitch over, let's get back to it. Our creation is currently living in the 3D universe. To bring it back into our normal 2D video world, we need a renderer 3D node. And here's a pro tip to keep your computer from sounding like a jet engine. Select the renderer 3D node, and in the inspector, change the render type to hardware renderer. This uses your graphics card and makes everything way smoother. Finally, connect your renderer 3D to the media out node. It looks great, but it's a bit static, isn't it? Let's give it some life. Select your Transform 3D node in the inspector, find the rotation controls and start playing with the Y rotation. I'm also going to adjust the X and Z values to get it looking as close as possible to the original video. But remember, this is your masterpiece, so feel free to make it your own. Now, let's scoot the Render 3D node out of the way, then select the Transform 3D node and click the little camera icon to add a camera 3D node. And just like that, a Merge 3D node pops up automatically to join the party. To keep things nice and organized, grab all the nodes from our Instagram page, add an underlay node, and give it a name and color that makes you smile. Now adjust the camera's Z position so we can see the full page. Okay, let's check the camera movement now. It's actually pretty simple. We're just going to rotate the Instagram page a bit, then slide it to the right. To do that, select your camera and tick the Use Target box. This creates a point that tells the camera exactly where to focus, no matter how much we move it around in 3D space. If you look in the 3D view, you'll notice this target point is sitting right on our page. Select the Media Out node and press 1 to preview the result. This way you can see it both in the 3D space and in the final video output. First, let's set the rotation. Add a keyframe for the X and Z positions at the very first frame. Then move to about halfway through the timeline and adjust the X and Z values until you get the angle you want. Next, let's add the movement. I'll use the target point for this as well. Go back to the first frame, keyframe the X value, then jump to the last frame and change it so the camera slides to the right. Right now it works, but it's a bit basic. So let's smooth it out in the spline graph. For the rotation, I want it to start fast and then slow down. So I'll select the keyframe, right click, go to ease, and choose out cubic. For the movement, I want it to start slow, speed up in the middle, then slow down again. I'll select the keyframe, press S, then hit Ctrl plus T to open the ease settings, and set both handles to around 70%. Let's check what we've got. Yep, that's it. Nice and smooth. And pretty close to the original. Now it's time to add the text behind our page. Drag a text plus node into the workspace, type your word, and change the font. I'm going with Helvetica. To actually see it in the scene, we'll need to add an image plane 3D and connect it to our merge 3D node. Jump back to the text plus node. Crank up the size to the max, then switch to the shading tab. Change the appearance to stroke and dial down the thickness until it feels right. While we're here, let's, let's swap the color. I'm ditching the blue for a bold orange. Next, select the Image Plane 3D node and adjust the Z position to push the text a little bit behind our page. Increase its size, then tweak the X position to place it exactly where you want it. If you play the animation now, you'll notice the text feels slower than in the original. That's because in After Effects, the text was placed closer to the camera. To fix it, I'll animate the movement. At the very start, set a keyframe for the X position, 
Then at the end of the timeline, shift it so only the letter S is visible. Finally, open the spline editor, select the keyframes, right click, choose ease and set it to out cubic. And just like that, we've got something that's pretty close to the original. Now let's add the glow effect to our text plus node. I'm using the same plugin I mentioned earlier. Just play around with the settings and tweak the color or even leave it as is for that nice. Personally, I think a custom color gives a much better result than the default. Once that's done, let's tidy things up. Select these three nodes and add an underlay node to keep everything nice and organized. Now it's time for the front text. Grab a new text plus node, drop it into the workspace and type the exact same word we used earlier. Change the font to match the first one. Or, hey, you could have just copy pasted the old one for speed. Next, connect it to an image plane 3D and adjust the Z position so it's closer to the camera than the page. Then tweak the X position so it's roughly centered. Jump back to the text plus node, change the color to gray, switch the style from bold to bold italic, and bring the letters closer together by lowering the tracking value. Then head to the layout tab and nudge the Y position down a bit, just enough to make it feel balanced. For the animation, right-click the text area and choose Follower. Open the Modifier tab, set the delay to 1, go to the Shading tab, drop the opacity to 0, and keyframe it. Then switch to Position, lower the Y value, and keyframe that too. Ignore the path, double-click Follower, then move 3 frames forward and bring the Y value back to 0 while raising the opacity to 1. And there you go, a super easy way to get that clean text animation. Now it's time for the third section of our title. The easiest way? Just copy the last text plus node and paste it right into the timeline. Of course, we'll add an image plane 3D and connect it to the merge 3D node. For positioning, tweak the X and Y transition values until it sits exactly where we want it. Next, jump back to the text plus node and change the color to a light blue. Then update the text itself. When you're done, make sure to click that little icon at the start of the line. For me, I'll fine-tune the position again. And honestly, you can do this directly in the Layout tab instead of adjusting it in the Image Plane 3D node. Much quicker, change the style to Bold Narrow Oblique. And don't forget to reset the tracker value back to zero. And just like that, you'll get the letter-by-letter -letter reveal. In this video, I'm skipping the step to make it word-by-word -word since I've already explained that effect in a previous tutorial. You can check the link if you want the full breakdown. Alright, now that we're done, let's add the glow effect. I'll be using the same plugin as before. Next, I'll take some time to tidy up the nodes by adding an underlay node to keep everything nice and organized. Okay, now let's move the render node aside and grab the background node from the toolbar and connect it to the output of the render node. But wait, select the Merge node and press Ctrl plus T to swap the inputs. Next, change the background color to a dark blue, but if we want to create that eye shape, we'll need another background node. Add an ellipse mask and connect it to the new background. To get that eye shape, increase the width of the mask and don't forget to hit Invert. For the animation, go to the frame where you want it to start. Add a keyframe for the mask's height and increase the value to cover the entire screen. Then, move a couple of frames forward and decrease the height to create the closing effect. Finally, at the end of the timeline, increase the height again to open the eye. Don't forget to open the spline editor and smooth out the animation curves for a cleaner. Before we move on to the last section of this fusion composition, it's time to add an overlay effect. I couldn't find the exact overlay used in the original, so I picked one that works well, but feel free to choose any overlay you like and add it the same way. After adding your overlay, connect it to the output of the last merge node by creating a new merge node. Select this new merge and you can adjust its size and rotation to fit exactly where you want it. Make sure the overlay is black and white by adding a color correction node, then drop the saturation all the way down to zero. Change the merge mode to screen to blend it properly. For the blurred edges, search for the Tilt Shift Blur node. Click on Depth Map Preview to adjust the blur area. Increase the In Focus range. Then, uncheck Depth Map Preview and ramp up the blur strength until it looks just right. 
Now, when the eye opens, we want that area to become transparent so we can show a second scene underneath. To do this, we'll go back to the very first merge node after the render node. When the eye effect closes, add a keyframe on the blend value, then move a couple of frames forward and set the blend to zero. We'll do the same thing for the background using another background node connected to the background input. This helps us manage the alpha properly and add the same keyframes to the new merge node as well. Oh, and don't forget to lower the blend value on the overlay merge node too, so it doesn't, oh, it doesn't overpower the scene. And that's it for this section. Now, let's move on the edit page. Now, place the fusion composition on the second timeline and add the eye images. The project file will be in the description below. Place the first eye image on the timeline and resize it. Here's an important tip. Since I want the eye images in black and white, go to the color tab and drop the saturation to zero. Back in the edit page, you'll notice black edges around the images because we changed their size. To fix this, head to the effects tab, search for generators, and grab the solid color generator. Change its color to white, and voila, problem solved. Now go back to the first eye image, move forward five frames, and make a cut. Add the second eye image above the first, reduce its opacity until the eye shapes match nicely. Then, increase the opacity back to 100 and make another cut after 5 frames. Repeat this process for all the images you have. This creates a smooth cut effect. When you're done, select all the eye images along with the background, right-click, and create a compound clip. Now place it underneath the fusion composition. Now you know why we made it. If playback feels slow, just hit Ctrl plus R and speed it up to your liking. As an extra step, I'll select the compound clip and enable dynamic zoom in the inspector. I'll change the easing to ease in and out for a smooth effect. Now let's move to the last part of our animation. Go to the effects panel and drag another fusion composition onto the timeline. Once that's set up, head over to the fusion page to start working on it. So let's start by adding the old city clip we used in the last scene and connect it to media out. Then, drag the original clip onto the timeline to match our animation. Just press 1 to preview, go to the first frame, and adjust the trim start to line up perfectly with the frame we want. Now, let's add an ellipse mask to our image. To make sure it's a perfect circle, click the equals button next to the height value. This will create an expression. Then drag the plus icon to the width value so both dimensions stay linked. Now, whenever you adjust the height, the width will follow automatically. Now, we want to convert it to 3D space. Click the image plane 3D icon, then the camera 3D icon, and finally the renderer 3D icon. Connect the renderer 3D node to the media out node. Now, change the renderer 3D's render type to hardware renderer. Then, select the camera 3D node and increase the Z translation value until the CD becomes visible. After that, add a background node and connect it to the output of the renderer 3D. Swap the merge node's inputs, then change the background color to white. Now it's time to animate. Select the camera 3D node and enable Use Target. At the first frame, set keyframes for both Z translation and X translation. Then move to the last frame and adjust these values until you match the shape from the original. And yes, we forgot to add a duplicate 3D node right after the image plane 3D. Set the number of copies to 4, then adjust the Z offset to create enough spacing between each copy, tweaking it until it looks right for your design. Now, go back to our camera and adjust its position from the target settings to center it. To make this easier, select the Merge 3D node and press 2 to view it in the left viewer, then select Media Out and press 1 to view it in the right viewer. This way, we can see both the 3D space and the final output at the same time. Tweak the camera settings directly in the 3D view. I find this approach much quicker, so I'll speed through the rest until it's done. Okay, now open the spline panel and select the animation curves we've just made. This gives us that smooth ease out effect for a more natural animation flow. So now, after finishing all the organization for this CD effect, it's time to add the text. Drag in a text plus node, Connect it to an image plane 3D and hook that up to the merge 3D node. Type your word, change the font, pick your color, and adjust the style to match your scene. Then, select the image plane 3D, switch to the Transform tab and tweak the Y rotation along with the Z and Y translation values until the text sits perfectly in our shot. 
Here, I just want to tweak the shape values again. So I jumped back into the camera settings for one more adjustment. My advice? Take it slow when editing. If you rush, you'll end up like me, going back to redo things. Anyway, now I'm changing the CD's color by adding a color corrector node and adjusting the hue until I get the look I want. If you notice, there's a black line showing here. I fixed it by animating the text from bottom to top. Just set a keyframe for the position, then head into the spline editor to smooth the motion. This little move solves our problem nicely. For the next text, add another text plus node to the workspace and follow the same steps as before. To change the style of each word, right-click inside the text box and choose Character Level Styling. Switch to the Modifier tab and press 1 to preview just your text on the screen. Now, select the first two words and decrease their size, then select the last line and change the font. To animate it, right-click in the text area, choose Follower, and set it up just like we did in the previous video. Now let's create this flower shape. Start by adding a background node and a polygon mask. Connect three points to form a triangle, then select the top point and curve it to get that smooth petal shape. Next, add a transform node to adjust the size and position of the shape. Then add a duplicate node. Set it to six copies and use the expression 360 divided by the number of copies to rotate each one evenly around. So here I changed my shape and made eight copies instead. Don't forget to update the rotation value using the same equation. Finally, add an image plane 3D to place it in 3D space. Adjust the values until it sits perfectly in your scene. The final step is to add a tilt shift blur and an overlay to polish the look. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Because this way, you're just going to be seen as most of the competitors in the market. Average.